life processes. Today, we are going to discuss about the life. What is life? Where does it exist? Life is found in the living things. The things that have life are called living things. The things that do not have life are called non-living things. You have been studying about the living things and non-living things since class 3, 4, 5 from your lower classes. You are learning about living and non-living things. And you learned that living things have some characters. Based on that, we can say that this is a living thing and this is a non-living thing. When you were studying about the living things in your class 3 or 4, you learned that this is a rock which cannot move on itself, so it is a non-living thing. This is a dog which can run, shout, bark jump. So it has some movements. So this dog is a living thing. In such a way, on basing certain features, you could distinguish which is living, which is non-living. Say, the first one, we take it as movement. Movement is one of the feature on basing which you can decide whether a thing is living or non-living. You see so many examples around you. A boy running. A man shouting. Shouting in the sense, where do you find the movement? The movement in his lips, in his mouth, he is shouting. A dog barking. So, we take the movement. A fish swimming. A bird flying. A horse running. So all these things, they have some movement either in their body or their body, whole body is moved from one place to another place, locomotion. So this is one of the important characteristics of living things we consider. The second one, what do we see? Living things eat food, they take food. Living things, they take food. You see a cow chewing cud, a cow eating grass, a boy eating cookies, a boy eating his food. We all eat because we need energy to survive, to do our daily activities. So definitely we eat. So eating is also one of the feature. We can take it eating. And what else? We take what other features we take to decide whether a thing is living or non-living. Growth. Living things grow. That means increase in their size. Living things increase in their size from time to time. A small baby, a newborn baby is grown to a kid. From the kid to an adolescent from an adolescent to an adult. So movement is one of the feature by which we can distinguish living and non-living things. And the second one is eating, taking food, growing. The third one, living things produce the young ones of their own kind. That is reproduce. Reproduce. Living things produce the young ones of their own kind. Dog gives birth to a puppy, man gives birth to a baby, such a way every living thing produces own kind. A new one or an young one of its own kind, we call it is reproduce and it is one of the feature we can take to distinguish between living and non-living things. And one more response to stimulus. Stimulus. You go near a small cat or any other small animal, by seeing you, it will be frightened and run away. If you go near a chicken, it runs away by making some sound. It is frightened. It responds to the stimulus. It finds it is the danger. You are the danger coming to catch it. So it runs. 
In the same way, even in plants, we see that certain plants, they show response to the stimulus. If you touch the leaves of touch me not plant, the leaves contract, they show some movement and they show some response to the stimuli. So this is the another feature by which you distinguish living and non-living things. But you cannot say this is a living or this is a non-living thing based on any one of the feature here. Simply just by looking at the movement you cannot say this is living and non-living. Because you see we see the movements in animals, movements in their body parts and movement of the animal from one place to another place completely locomotion. But we cannot find any movements in plants. In plants we cannot see any movements to our visible, they are not visible to our naked eye. Of course the roots of plants may move in the soil but it is very slow and not visible. So by looking at that you may say that I don't see any movements in this plant. So can you consider the plant is a non-living thing because due to the absence of movement? No. So in your lower classes that is accepted okay. You don't know what is happening in the cellular level or molecular level. So there you have distinguished with the help of some movement, some features like movement, eating, growing, reproduction, response to stimuli. The second one eating. You see the animals eating visible to your naked eye but plants, you don't find any plant eating directly. So you don't find any kind of movements, you don't find the plants eating directly except some parasitic plants. So you don't find that plants eating the food directly either they, uh, through their leaves. They prepare their own food but it is not visible to the naked eye. So on basing this taking food on basing this feature you cannot distinguish this is living this is not living. And growing increasing in size. So this is also not the exact one to distinguish between living and non-living things. Living things grow plants they grow in their size. Even animals grow in their size. Sometimes certain non-living things also grow in their size because of the climatic conditions, physical phenomena, they may increase in their size. But it doesn't mean that they have life. For example, we may observe the expansion of certain materials due to heat. So that means it increases in its size. But we cannot consider that is growth. We cannot consider that is that they have life. We cannot tell that they have life even though their size is increased. Sometimes certain materials absorb water and get imbibed, increased in their size. You cannot take it as growth. You cannot say that they have life in them. So we cannot take even this growth in its size, increasing in its size cannot be considered. And reproduction, 